the subject of harvest from the ultimate dimension what is the ultimate dimension the way harvest should be seen primarily because if we understand harvest from this perspective then every other area of harvest in our life will be easier to enjoy we won't find it difficult and that's the harvest mindset uh scripture for this morning's discussion is matthew chapter 9 verse 36 to 38 but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion and that's speaking about jesus he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest truly is plentiful but the laborers are few in this season of harvest god wants us to have the right mindset concerning the subject from his own perspective from his own understanding and then we will be able to bring in our harvests in measures that are limitless if we understand the subject of harvest and the mindset on and how to have the mindset of harvest from god's understanding then we will bring in our own harvest and this harvest will be unlimited now in our journey of life as believers if we can premise our understanding on matthew 6 verse 33 everything will just be fine what does matthew 6 33 says he says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you now the harvest that we seek most of the time is embedded in all these things if you read earlier verses in this matthew 6 it says that people worry about what to eat what to drink where to live what to put on and it says it's only pagans that think like that that means if i worry about what to eat i'm a pagan as a child of god if i worry about tomorrow and what it will bring and how i don't understand it i'm a pagan in fact let us go back to matthew 6 verse 23 let's start from verse 23 let us know how to repent from paganism this morning go to verse 22 the lamp of the body is the eye if therefore your eye is good your whole body will be full of light the lamp of a body is the eye can you close your eye for a moment can you see any part of your body do you even know how to move no open your eye if your eye is good that means if you are not blind your whole body will be full of light if your understanding of god's ways are blind they are dark your whole life will be in darkness but if your eye is good that means if your understanding of the word is right and you rightly divide the word of truth then your entire life will be full of light look at the next verse it's taking us somewhere the next verse says but if your eye is bad your whole body will be full of darkness the reason why there is darkness in a lot of lives is because they are not seen well if therefore the light 
that is in you is darkness. Can you imagine? How can a particular light be darkness? It is possible. I used to live in an area where the, 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 the public electricity, when it comes and you are looking at the bulb, is looking like ripen orange. It's neither dark nor bright. You can't use it for anything. It's just there. There is light, but it's not light. If you plug anything, if you're not careful, it will blow it. Instead of giving you benefit, it gives you wahala. And there is that that's the type of light that if you connect it to a stabilizer, it will even kill some of a stabilizer. So it is light, but it is not light, it's darkness. It's better not to have that type of light. So he said, if therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now the 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 original King James without we are reading New King James. The Conk King James he says if your eye is evil. So, instead of using bad, he say if your eye is evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. You say, how great is that darkness if the light that you have is darkness? See, lack of knowledge is one thing. Half knowledge is dangerous. It's better you don't know then you know half. Is it not better not to eat yam at all than to eat half cooked yam? One will make you hungry, you're not eating at all. But the one that you will eat that is not cooked will make you sick. Verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve god and mammon just continue continue therefore i say unto you do not worry about your life but that is what we do today what you will eat or what you will drink how many of you have not worried about this since the year started no about your body no about your body what you will put on I don't used to think about what I will wear on Sunday morning until that morning. Because I'm trying not to worry about what to wear. I'm very careful. It is always when I want to go out that I go to the closet and look for the clothes I wear. I don't plan what I wear. I didn't plan this. He said, is not life more than food? And the body more than clothing. So is he saying we should come out naked? That's not what he's saying. The next verse. He said, look at the beds of the air. For they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into pans. Yet the, your heavenly father feeds them. You know, parrots is one of the birds that can easily repeat what you said to them. So I will use the parrot as an example. Can you ever see a parrot come and perch on the wall and say, what will we eat today now? If the parrot said that, wouldn't you run? Or you ever hear goats moving around and say, there is hunger in the land. What will we eat? <laughs> or chickens catching the ground. All these human beings are taking all the food. There is nothing to eat. You will never hear an animal complain they just go and believe that they will find something to eat. So it says, if God cares about the birds of the air, because the birds don't gather, they don't do savings. All right? The birds don't do saving. They just wake up, whistle their way into having meals. <laughs> but they are always whistling. And I believe that it's after they have eaten and they are full that they will wish. 
Who feeds the birds? Those ones that are not in the zoo. It's God. He said, your heavenly father feeds them. And you, are you not more of more value than they? If you worry about what to eat, you are saying God cannot take care of you. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? In fact, if you worry, you will grow slim. You will not grow big. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Verse 29. We are getting there. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. There is no amount of fashion that you can put together in this world that is better than that, those of the lilies of the field, the flowers. But you see, they will be looking so beautiful in the morning and they fade away after a while. Now, if God so clothes the grass of a field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Then verse, 20, verse 31, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Look at the verdict in verse 32. After, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Are you a Gentile? The conch King James called them pagans. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. He knows. But what does he want you to do? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. We have heard now. But we will not hear. We will leave the service now. Start worrying. Some people have a degree in worry matters. Masters in worology. And then PhD in anxiety. Professor Worry. God wants us to do something for him. And that's why he left us on the earth. And that thing, God cannot do it by himself. So he fashioned you to be able to do that for him. So that he can take care of your own. You know, God is so wise. He knows that he cannot come to the earth physically and build the kingdom of God. So he equipped you to build it. And he knows that you on your own, you cannot build your own kingdom by yourself. So he takes on the responsibility of building it. But it is an exchange. While you do his own, he does your own. But many times we believe that we can do our own by ourselves. So we abandon God's own. And then he abandons you. Since you can handle it by yourself, fix it. Me, I will look for another person to do it. Because he will never lack somebody who will build a kingdom. Because he says, even if it means carrying stones to praise me. I can turn stones to praise us. But God forbid that, God will, that he will replace me with stone. While we take care of his job, he takes care of us. That's what this scripture is saying. 